good morning everyone welcome to all the trainees preparing for the exams who have joined us in the youtube session we have got a volunteer training who is happy to take part in the discussion welcome good morning mr dean and um, i'm happy for this recording and uh, to be shared and uh, spread in the social media for the benefit of trainees uh for the and for for the further efforts your preparations thank you thank you mr d for this opportunity thank you very much that's very kind of you today we are going to discuss a clinical scenario which is uh, not very common but can come in the infection table it's better to know the rare scenarios also you have a 43 year old man presents mm -hmm. to your clinic with history of right sided loin pain weight loss and uh, burning sensation while passing urine is gp has done some investigations like blood test and um, urine test the blood test showed his egfr as dropped from his usual levels of more than 90 to 60 otherwise he is quite fit and uh, no specific medical comorbidities his urine test by the gp also showed plenty of leukocytes and the gp is quite worried and referred you go ahead okay. yeah um i'll see this gentleman in the urology general urology clinic and i'll plan my consultation like a focused history clinical examination under chaperon cover and uh, reviewing the basic investigations in the history uh, i would uh, like to know uh, the uh, onset and duration of his loin pain uh whether there were any relieving factors and whether there are any aggravating factors um whether he had any blood in the urine any history of urine retention any history of urinary tract infection so of weight loss uh and any pre, uh, in the in the uh, i'll need more details on the uh, urinary symptoms he has got dysuria i'll also see if he has got any storage uh, urinary symptoms or uh, voiding symptoms uh, any associated incontinence uh, and in the medical history i would like to know his uh, comorbidities there's no comorbidities uh, whether he is on any uh, regular treatment uh, previously whether he had any uh long term treatments previously any surgeries done in the past um in the surgical history yeah uh, any previous surgeries uh, in the in the uh, personal history mainly to see what his uh, ethnicity is whether he had any family history of exposure to any chronic disease any history of malignancy any family history of stones um and this will be followed by a focused uh, general and urological examination under chaperon cover in the general examination i'll see his performance status his bmi uh, any signs of any chronic illness and in the clinical examination uh, i'll focus my examination on the right side to see if there is any tenderness any fullness uh, any palpable bladder uh, external genital examination to see for any abnormal areas in the penis in the testis any nodular swellings in the uh, vas deferens and uh, we'll do a consented rectal examination to feel for the prostate any abnormalities or nod nodularity of the prostate and this will be uh, followed by a reviewing of the in, uh, basic investigation so in the in the blood test i'm concerned about his decrease in gfr uh, and with the history of right loin pain I, i i will assume that there is a pathology going on in the right kidney that is decreasing its uh, function um i'll review his uh, bloods full blood count uh, to see if there is uh, any abnormality in the white cell count crp uh, and then Uh, his leukocytes is increased in the urine uh, i'll see if there is multiple urinalysis is available uh, if it is only leukocyte is positive 
then I would suspect sterile pyuria in his case. And uh, in, in my differential diagnosis, I'll put a uh, stone and as well as uh, uh, any chronic illnesses like uh, genital urinary tuberculosis or even malignancies are also a possibility if there is a sterile pyuria. Uh, if there is anything I can uh, get from the history, I'll uh, re review his systems and then um, uh, we'll try to get to a diagnosis. That's, that will be my plan for him in the outpatients. Okay, good. Um, what are all the differential diagnoses for sterile pyuria? For sterile pyuria, stones, uh, genital urinary tuberculosis, malignancy, um, uh, any any uh, partially treated UTI. Uh, yeah, and okay. parasite, parasite, par, sorry, parasitic infestations of the GUT, genital urine tract. Okay, that's good. Now, this patient has got urine analysis which showed presence of leukocytes. Its blood investigations were pretty normal except for the fall in EGFR, which we discussed. The WCC count shows a little bit trend towards the monocytes and leukocytes and neutrophil counts were normal, CRP counts were normal hemoglobin and full blood count otherwise is normal. Now, in case if they have considering the differential diagnosis of GUTB, what other history and examination findings you will concentrate for? So in the history, I'll see his ethnicity, whether he was from a uh, region where the TB is endemic, whether he had any childhood TB, uh, he had BCG vaccination, um, is there any uh, previous history of uh, long-term treatment for t uh, TB, any family history of TB, any recent exposure to TB, and also any recent uh, uh, travel to any endemic areas. In the examination, in that case, I'll specifically look for general examination findings of any chronic illness. And also I will examine the chest to see if there is any features of uh, abnormalities in the respiration, like in any cavitation, uh, any collapse of lungs, and in the uh, also I look for any generalized lymphadenopathy. Uh, and specifically for the gen uh, uh, urological examination, I'll be looking for uh, any uh, beading or any uh, nodularity that I can feel in the testes or in the epididymis. Uh, and also in the rectal examination, I specifically look for any nodularity I can feel in the prostate. So these are the things okay. I look for. Yeah, that's good. So if you have a kind of uh, uh, leaning towards the GUTB, sometimes the GP will write it in the referral letter itself. So as you said in the history, we need to see the ethnicity. This, ben this patient is from uh, Bengal, West Bengali region. And, uh, but he is in, say, England for many decades. And uh, the problem is there is some frequent travel history to India and uh, West Bengal. So you need to specifically mention about the travel history. The other things I will add is the family history and any past history of tuberculosis. You can just ask the patient, maybe patient had childhood tuberculosis, and then now this may be a reactivation, history of tuberculosis in the family, and uh, during the travel, he may have seen uh, friends or relatives with tuberculosis. So the travel history can be a little bit in detail. And if he has past history of travel history, we can ask about what is the regimen of medications? Is it uh, six months one, nine months one, how he got recovered, et cetera. And then when you come to the examination, you told a little bit about uh, BCG vaccination. So you can ask about his BCG vaccination and also you can look for the scar in the physical examination. Coming to the general examination, as you said, like uh, weight measurement, any signs of loss of weight and coming to the lungs, in inspection, it's quite difficult to say something very obvious unless the patient had a significant pulmonary tuberculosis. But you can say, right from tracheal deviation, any um, signs of uh, pleural aspiration or any just major chest changes. You can mention that I will use a stethoscope to auscultate the lungs. That's where you can 
do or come across the findings like um, lung collapse, et cetera. But in a urology exam, you are not expected to have that part of the examination. Okay. Once you have the genital urinary tuberculosis as a possibility, it can affect anything from head to foot. So abdominal examination, which you correctly said because of the right renal pain and uh, extragenital examination, digital health examination should be done a little bit more in detail. And uh, I will also include palpation of the urethra, just like how you do for a urethral stricture to see is there any bleeding there and uh, very meticulous palpation of the testes because we know that testicular tuberculosis is a known entity. Okay, mm -hmm. so with that background, you can take it a little bit more in detail. So in the exam, they will take you as sterile pyuria. Mm -hmm. Once the examiner leans towards the genital urinary tuberculosis, you can say, since now my diagnosis is possible genital tuberculosis, I wish to include these things in my examination and these things in my history. So that mm -hmm. that's more complete. You can go back and cover the grounds which you have been touched up in the first round. Okay. 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 Thanks. Good. Now. This patient, um, let us assume that uh, he has no problems in external genitalia examination. Digital rectal examination shows like a 35 cc smooth prostrate, no signs of any changes. He's passing urine well. Mm -hmm. He has no pain when you palpated the right loin. And um, we discussed the investigations which showed sterile pyuria. How are you going to investigate him further? So with his uh, history, I will suspect a genital urinary tuberculosis uh, affecting the right kidney. So my investigations will be uh, to uh, send a three samples of uh, early morning urine for uh, uh, culture and also for AFB staining. Um, I will also uh, arrange a chest X-ray um, as per the NICE 2016 guidelines. Uh, and specifically looking for uh, the right side pain, I will arrange for a, a CGFR is 60. So it should be fine for me to arrange for a CT with a delayed phase, uh, mainly to see for any calcifications, any abnormalities of the ureters, any abnormalities in the bladder, uh, because when I'm suspecting you know, GUTB, these are the things I look for in a CT scan. So this will be my plan of approach for him initially. Okay, what kind of urine test will tell you about the presence of mycobacterium? You said three samples. So what some what kind of test is done in the laboratory? So uh, it, it, uh, the tests done in the laboratory are twofold. One is a smear test for the acid fast bacilli. So seal Nielsen staining or oramin staining can be used for uh, TB diagnosis. Uh, and uh, when we use the seal Nielsen staining, the acid fast bacilli will appear like pink. Uh, and this can, uh, the gold standard for TB still now is uh, culture, but the problem with uh, culture is it is a long process. Uh, the usual medium used is Lowenstein Janssen medium, and it will take six to eight weeks for the culture report to come. There are new newer techniques like uh, uh, nucleic acid amplification test and uh, PCR polymer chain reaction test, which can give us a rapid diagnosis. And the recent one, uh, the RAF uh, MTB expert uh, uh, is a modified cassette type uh, nucleic acid amplification test that approved by WHO, which can give the diagnosis of TB in two hours, and it has got better sensitivity and specificity than the uh, cult uh, cultures. So these are the tests that is usually available for us. Okay, so the urine test done by for this patient showed the uh, presence of mycobacterium tuberculi in the staining and the culture also grew mycobacterium tuberculi. So now you got the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. We are saying the CT scans, it is better to use the word like excretory phase because excretory. you said you, you wish to do a delayed phase CT scan mm -hmm. to see calcifications in the kidneys. Calcification in the kidneys you can see even in the plain CT, isn't it? Yeah. So excretory phase is very good to tell you about any caliceal malformations, pelvic caliceal, PUG obstruction, beading in the ureter, presence of opposite normal excretory ureter, and also the bladder. Okay. Yeah. Can you read the first picture for me and share the screen so that we can go through the investigations, please? Yeah, sure.
so uh, this is a coronal section coronal reconstruction section of a uh, plain ct which is showing multiple calcifications almost replacing the right kidney the right kidney is shrunken um, the left kidney appears to be normal in this plain ct um, and uh, yeah this is the finding i can see from the coronal section shall i go to the next picture mr d sorry sorry it's a contrast or non contrast ct uh, it is a non contrast ct because when i compare to the left kidney i cannot see any contrast in, uh, coming into that kidney so i think this is a plain ct it shows multiple calcifications replacing the uh, right kidney and the right kidney is shrunken okay so you can add the normal two main things first one is other than the shrunken calcified uh, kidney on the right side are not able to find any other calcified lesions in the liver spleen or yes. uh, in the paravertebral region or retroperitoneum or in the opposite kidney and uh, second normal standard sentences i wish to see further uh, cuts in the images to make the diagnosis so just yes. make it like a routine sure. go to the next picture please so this is a axial uh, reconstruction of a uh, ab abdominal ct which again shows uh, the this is a, cont a contrast ct uh, because i could see uh, uh, the contrast blushing in the left kidney but i can't see any contrast in the vessels so um, sorry I, i i'll go back from this i'll say this is, this is again a plain ct no contrast and i again i can see uh, the right kidney completely uh, replaced by a calcified mass and from uh, if i look into the other abdominal organs i can't see any more calcifications and yes i would like to see more of these sections to see the uh, complete extension of these calcifications and also to look for the ureters and bladder okay you can go for the next picture please uh this one is also an axial section showing the extensively calcified uh, right kidney and there is a calcification i can see in the pelvis as well um the left kidney I, i presume it is a lower cut section of the left kidney it appears to be normal still and still i can't see any other calcifications in other in other organs no bony abnormality seen in this section uh yeah again i would like to see more uh, details of the ct scan thanks okay you can go back to the previous picture please yeah this one is a contrast picture that's why you can it's see not. there is some lighting up of the normal left kidney mm -hmm. and uh, even the vessels are a bit lightened up but not to the prominent level of seeing the ivc and iota quite distinctively okay. but it doesn't make any major difference we know that this kidney is a shrunken one it's a calcified kidney and not much excretion is remaining uh, is there any name for this kind of kidneys uh, especially it's called tb uh, put putty kidney okay good so let us leave the pictures as it is now you got the ct pictures and the ct report says that the right kidney is shrunken and replaced by the calcified lesions otherwise opposite kidney is functioning well and draining well no other abnormality noted in the ureters or in the bladder what is your plan so my diagnosis now is genito urinary tuberculosis affecting the right kidney completely replacing the right kidney with a uh, calcified mass uh, so in this case i have to start the medical treatment first i have to in because tb is a notifiable disease uh, i have to involve the infectious disease team uh, uh, and refer the patient to uh, the uh, for, to start the treatment of genito urinary tuberculosis uh, and the treatment uh, uh, is initially to start with a four tuberculosis drugs for two months which is the intensive phase followed by two tb drugs for four four months i will make sure that he has no other risk factors like hiv any immunocompromised state any previous history of tb which was treated partially in which case i have to suspect a multi drug resistant tb in which case that will be tested by the uh, expert mdr uh, uh, rf uh, sa if it is not an mdr tb we can st stick to the 6 months regime but if it is an mdr tb 
then it has to be a different regime that can extend up to 24 months of treatment. Um, I will, uh, may, yeah, and, and, the, and the medications involved are in the intensive phase. It is isoniazid, rifampicin, uh, ethambutol, and pyrazinamide. And in the continuation phase, it is isoniazid and rifampicin. Uh, in UK, the treatment and the further follow-up of the medical side is uh, continued by the infectious disease team. Uh, from the urological perspective, I will uh, again see him uh, after starting the treatment in six weeks time to see whether his symptoms has improved after starting the tuberculosis treatment um, and then continue to uh, follow him up to make sure that he's not developing any complications like any uh, abscess or any fistula. Um, yeah, so this will be my approach towards him and plan for the next treatment. Okay, I agree that uh, the medications will be in the hands of the infection specialist to take care. But uh, just as a overall idea, what type mm -hmm. of blood test you need to do before starting a patient on anti-tuberculous treatment? So before starting, I have to make sure that uh, his liver function tests are normal because uh, INH uh, and rifampicin can adversely affect the uh, liver function and can increase the transaminases and even cause fulminant hepatitis. So I will make sure that his liver function tests are normal. Uh, and, Any specific yeah. side effects of the ATT tablets you are aware of? Exactly. So uh, the uh, isony acid is known to cause a peripheral neuropathy. So it should always be combined with the uh, pyridoxine. Uh, rifampicin can cause uh, orange color urine, which has no health side effect, but the patient, we have to uh, beforehand inform the patient that this is a non side effect. It can cause hepatitis. Uh, Ethambutol can cause uh, optical neuritis and visual disturbances uh, and problem with the visual acuity. And pyrazinamide again can cause uh, liver toxicity. So these are the common side effects of uh, anti-tuberculosis drugs. Okay, what are all the drugs used in case there is any resistance, MDR-TB? Uh, in case of MDR-TB, we have to go for the second line treatment. Uh, which is uh, six, uh, it, it is called uh, uh, DOTS plus, uh, which includes six uh, medications in the initial six months, followed by four medications in the later, later 18 months. The initial six medications are uh, pyrazinamide, ethionamide, ethambutol, cycloserine, ofloxacin, and canamycin. And what happens in the extent and the late, latest period is that we will take off the pyrazinamide and canamycin and we'll continue with the other four drugs. Uh, so uh, that, and also if the, if the patient has got any background illness like HIV or immunocompromised state, we have to uh, uh, correct that, that as well during the treatment of the multidrug resistant TB. Okay, very good. For the viewers who have joined in the YouTube, but these CT scan pictures were taken from a website known as Radiopedia. It has got very good teaching material from the radiological diagnosis point. And I've placed the reference for these pictures in the video description below. Okay, from urology aspect, you're going to follow this patient and um, are you going to intervene for anything? What kind of follow-up you are going to arrange for him? Yeah, sure. So uh, early intervention is not advisable uh, in a active genital urinary tuberculosis. Uh, always uh, the initial treatment is um, starting the medical treatment. And even if there is an initial complication, uh, it's better to wait at least six weeks uh, when the patient is into the anti-tuberculosis drugs for any surgical intervention. And uh, in this patient, uh, what my, my concerns will be whether he will develop any uh, perinephric tubercular abscess that can cause um, fistula into the surrounding muscles, even into the bowel and into the skin surface. Uh, so that's the reason that I follow him up. If he develops any complications uh, in the interim and if he's on anti-tuberculosis drugs, then there is no contraindication provided that he's fit for anesthesia and his general condition allows. Um, if he goes in for a complication during the procedure, then the best option is because this is a non-functioning kidney, which is completely replaced by calcification, uh, then a 
nef nephrectomy is the option uh, in, for him. And for a tuberculosis uh, patient, I mean, tuber tuberculous kidney, which is uh, in this patient, it is a severe tuberculous kidney. I will prefer to do a open nephrectomy if there are any complications arising from this one. Okay. Uh, um, open. Is there something wrong in trying for a laparoscope or robotic assisted nephrectomy? And uh, mm -hmm. the only caution is the chances of open conversion is too high because of the fat, uh, difficulty in getting the planes. And uh, it's almost like the xanthogranulomatous paranephritis, which we discussed in episode 10. Anything to add from you? Uh, and I'll also make sure that there is no uh, other areas of involvement like the ureter. Or, and also my main worry is whether his dysuria has improved, whether his urinary symptoms has improved because I want to make sure that there is no involvement of the bladder with the uh, tuberculosis, but mostly even the bladder symptoms will improve with the medical treatment. Uh, yes, so these patients, there is a role for flexible stroscopy. It's a persistent sterile pyuria with a known tuberculosis, at least a diagnostic purpose, you can do a flexible stroscopy. But if there are some lesions, you can take some pictures. There is no real need for a biopsy. If it is a proven AFB in the urine, we can wait for the ATT drugs to act on. There is no role for a biopsy when we know that the urine is positive for ATT. The other main thing which you need to discuss is this patient may come out well with ATT and um, the kidney may still remain non-functioning. The most important thing is referral to a nephrologist and monitoring the blood pressure. A non-functioning kidney can be a kind of a nidus for increase in the blood pressure. And sometimes the blood pressure will become quite uncontrollable, requiring one drug, two drug, or even multi-drugs for hypertension. The only way we can control the patient's hypertension is by doing a simple nephrectomy for the non-functioning kidney. And uh, we know that his EGFR has fallen. So it's nice to involve the nephrologist so that he's overall nephron cats or taken care. It's more of a medical management than nothing to do with urology. Sure. Various possibilities can happen in genitourinary tuberculosis other than the renal involvement alone. Could you take me through the other organ involvement like ureter, bladder, and extragenitalia? Yeah. So uh, the involvement of ureters uh, are mainly like a, uh, the classic appearance is called coarse screw or a bearded appearance. It is due to the differ differential shedding of the tuberculous bacilli and this this lodging, I mean lodging of the tuberculous bacilli in different areas that can and the body reacts like a response uh, and with fibrosis and caseation granulomas. So the ureter will appear like cited ureter affected is the vesico ureteric junction because that's the area where the urine stands for a long time in a ureter. Uh, the, the vesico ureteric junction involvement can cause strictures and also from the bladder side, it can appear like a golf or ureter. Uh, in the bladder, the initial phases uh, uh, mainly presents like storage urinary symptoms, but in the later phase, if it is a severe reaction and there is multiple caseating granulomas and fibrosis of the bladder, the classic appearance of the bladder is described as a thimble bladder, which is a low capacity, low complaint uh, bladder. Um, the other, the most common site of uh, genital tuberculosis is epididymis, uh, and these patients can present with either uh, epididymal swelling, pain, uh, epidym uh, scrotal fistulas, or even as uh, presentation as infertility. Um, the in the epididymis, the most common site involved is Clovis minor because of the increased vascularity and most common. A mode of spread to epidemics is hematogenous spread rather than the retrograde spread from the urinary tract. Uh, in on clinical examination, the epidemics will appear like beaded, swollen, and if there is any uh, pus, we can feel the even we can feel the calcifications like firm nodules over the epidemics. Uh, testicular uh, TB, direct testicular TB is rare. Most of the time, it is uh, an extension from the epididymal TB. And like epi epididymal TB, it can again present with uh, swell, uh, collection of fluid, uh, granul uh, granulomas, calcification, fistulas, and infertility. Uh, prostatic TB on its own is very rare. Uh, it is again a possibly hematogenous spread from a primary source. 
usual presentation is hem, uh, uh, storage symptoms and microscopic hematuria uh, and sterile pyuria. Uh, and usually uh, the diagnosis is made uh, during uh, TURP, it is an enlarged prostate and the histology incidentally showing the cassiating granulomas, Langhans giant, giant cells. And sometimes even in during the pro prostatic biopsies, uh, we can get the diagnosis of uh, prostatic TB. Uh, the TB can also appear like a ejaculatory duct obstruction uh, because when it involves the vas deferens or in the uh, seminal vesicles or even the ejaculatory duct. The vas deferens, uh, the classic appearance is again bearded appearance because of the lodging of bacilli at different places. It will present as infertility and uh, decreased uh, amount of semen. Uh, if it definitely, definitely, if it involves seminal vesicles, then the classic picture of uh, low volume semen is the uh, uh, presentation and also infertility. Uh, the involvement of urethra as such is low. The chance is low with TB because of the continuous flow of urine from that part. There is no stagnation. Uh, penile foreskin uh, granulomas can happen and that will appear as uh, abnormal ulcerations, uh, long, long standing thickened areas in the foreskin. And also scrotal skin TB which is a very rare condition, but it can also appear like a, a painless, uh, painless ulcer with indurated edges uh, and calcifications. Uh, and sometimes we can get uh, TB in the lymph nodes, in going lymph nodes, when we palpate that area, we can get the, uh, discrete lymph nodes, which are non-tender and calcified and hard in appearance. So these are the things I know about GUTB infections. Very good. Because sometimes there may be a scenario where the kidney is not involved, but it's only the bladder is involved, or there may be a scenario with even uh, tuberculosis of the epidemis also. Very rare, but it's nice to know at least once so that if it happens and if it uh, is selected unfortunately for you, you should be able to cover it. One characteristic other sign in the bladder is known as thimble bladder. Thimble is a kind of a protective uh, cap worn by the tailors and those who work with the needles to protect the thumb from injury. And since the bladder is becoming so contracted, it almost mimics the thimble. So that's why it is known as thimble bladder. Now, could you take me through the next picture, please? Next one, please. Yeah, this is the flow chart uh, taken from 2019 publication by Mr. Asif Munir and his group in mm -hmm. Nature's. It's a very nice review of the presentation, clinical features, diagnostic workup and treatment for genitourinary tuberculosis, especially with uh, Western countries in context. Could you just go through this flow chart for me, please? Yeah. So it shows the primary source of infection. So person with pulmonary tuberculosis or cows with Mycobacterium bovis, the primary exposure is by inhalation of the Mycobacterium tuberculosis infected aerosol or ingestion of bovis infected milk or dairy products. Uh, so the no infection is like when Mycobacterium is eliminated immediately by the innate immunity of the body, in which case the IGRA test will be negative. The primary infection, uh, if the local infection is cleared, the mycobacteria will be contained or eliminated by an acquired immunity. In this case, IGRA test is positive. The primary tuberculosis is mostly localized in the lung and also in tonsil or intestine, ileum or cecum. Uh, and there is a con uh, concept of primary tuberculosis complex, which is known as GONS focus. Uh, so GONS focus and lymphangitis plus regional lymphadenitis uh, the hilar or the mesenteric lymph nodes can be get involved. And in this case, also the IGRA test will be positive. So that's the first slide. Yeah, so the main thing is, um, if the primary exposure is immediately clear, if the patient has excellent immunity, and if the load of infection is minimal, there won't be any infection. So many of us may be having these kind of non-clinical or subclinical infections where the IGRA test will be negative. The importance is these patients, when they are exposed again to tuberculosis, there is no innate body defense. They will have a good amount of infection whenever they are exposed to. But if it is a proper primary infection, and then there is a local infection cleared, 
that gives that IGRA test positive, which means the patient will be protective for any future exposures to tuberculosis. Mm. The primary tuberculosis complex is nothing but the primary infection in an area, say for example, lung, and its associated lymphatics, that is known as primary tuberculosis complex. Go for the next slide, please. So this is a second slide, uh, which shows that in one to 5% of the cases, local spread to surrounding tissues and adjacent organs happen. And it's called localized progressive primary tuberculosis. Uh, so this can be pulmonary tuberculosis in the form of pneumonia, consolidation, small cavities, effusion, intestinal tuberculosis in the form of ileal and cecal ulcers, granulomatous inflammation, and sputum and tissue biopsies are usually gene expert and culture positive for mycobacterium tuberculosis. In 90 to 95% of the cases, it is containment with the acquired immunity, and it can present as, as you told, like a latent G TB infection, and the mycobacteria will be contained within the granular mass. So there won't be any clinical disease, but the IGRA test will be positive in those cases. Uh, in one to 5% of the cases, because of the hematogenous and lymphatic spread with widespread dissemination, it can be extra pulmonary tuberculosis. So tuberculosis, tuberculosis of the meninges, brain, bones, muscle, and for us, the lymph nodes, adrenals, urogenital tract, reproductive tract, and these are mainly diagnosed by biopsies, fine needle aspirates, uh, CSF for the brain part, urine, pleural fluid, and are usually and these are usually gene expert and culture positive. And uh, reactivation can happen when the patient has got any risk factors such as HIV, immunosuppression, smoking, malnutrition, diabetes, and stress. So, okay, this is good. What is you can go for the next picture. Is there another slide? Uh, no, sorry. Okay. That's the slide. So, yeah, you can maximize this, please. Mm -hmm. Good. So that's a quite in-detail discussion. And mm -hmm. uh, I've given the link for the present, uh, the flowchart and also the article in the link in the description below. We have discussed as much as possible so that we are able to cover the non-urological aspects also because mm -hmm. sometimes in the exam, the examiner can take you into the treatment part. You can say that I will discuss with my infection specialist uh, and lead them with anti tuberculosis treatment, but mm -hmm. sometimes some basics like what is the drug, what is the four drug, what is the two drug, what is the regimen? And sometimes that uh, six months regimen can be included to nine months, especially the two drugs will be extended if there is any high load of infection or if there is any signs of non-response and depending upon the uh, spread of the disease. There is also a term known as miliary tuberculosis where patient has got significant infection all throughout the body, which can affect all the way from the brain, lungs, intestines, and uh, kidneys, and even the bones, blood spread organs, and both lymphatic and hematogenous spread. Any questions you have on this genitative unit tuberculosis discussion? Um, uh, no, I mean, uh, it was good and it was detailed. Well, thanks for that. And uh, yeah, yeah uh, I'm happy. I, I think for the first yes, 10 minutes, this should be enough, isn't it? This much of. Exactly. Exactly. It depends upon which type of exam you are taking. If you are taking UK first yes exam, the discussions in this video is more than enough. And, uh, but if you are taking some other exams like FIBU, there may be a slight difference in the pattern. So you may have to know a little bit more, but I think we have covered the GUTB to a good extent. So if you're happy, we will conclude the today's uh, teaching session. For the viewers who have joined us in the YouTube, there will be a link for a Indian episode on GUTB discussion on your left side. There will be a link for the subscription in the center and our complete playlist on the right side. Please free free to use them and uh, share it with your trainees. Class dismissed.